Hello and welcome to my initial review of the Palmetto State Armory AK-74. I originally planned on doing this video at about a thousand rounds. However, I decided to do this video at 420 rounds now. The reason being there are many people who are interested in buying this gun. And what I can say so far is this, this gun is definitely worth your money. For a thousand dollars, you cannot go wrong with getting an affordable, high quality, American made AK-74. In a world where arsenals, Russians, and other manufactured AK-74s are extremely expensive and hard to find, this is definitely the way to go. So far, I would say this. If you can find this gun in stock, get it while you can. There are a few different ways to get this gun, and I'll explain those further. Starting off with the muzzle brake. This is a AK-74 style muzzle brake. It is of a high quality and does exactly what a muzzle brake should do, which is mitigate the already non-existent recoil of 545 by 39 It does kick up some flash, but however, this is not a real big deal in my opinion. It also uses standard 24 millimeter thread. Moving on to the front post, as you can see, the front post is somewhat canted to the left-hand side. This is with an acceptable standards though as many AKs have canted iron sights. What I will say is this, as long as you can zero it, it should be good. Well, one thing I did have an issue with is that the front post seemed to somewhat be a little bit easier than normal to unscrew and screw in. It was definitely not going to unscrew itself when shooting. One of the major aspects of people deciding whether they should get this rifle or not is the barrel. Many people are afraid that the fact that this barrel is not cold hammer forged, nor is it chrome lined, is a deal breaker. Personally, I feel as though it, it is a good quality barrel that shouldn't matter. The nitriding on the barrel has proven itself to be a good provision against corrosion. The button rifling presumably used is a good quality barrel. What I will say is this, any good quality barrel is what ultimately matters. If a barrel is cold hammer forged and chrome lined, it can still suck. If a barrel is nitrided and button rifled, it can be infinitely better than a crappy cold hammer forged chrome lined barrel. In terms of longevity, I don't feel like you should have any issues to worry about. Usually people who shoot these types of guns will never ever reach the round count that is required to destroy one of these barrels. In fact, I highly doubt I will ever be able to shoot that amount of rounds to this gun. What I will say about the accuracy is that I have not been able to really test the accuracy at any long range. I've only been really shooting at 25 yards or in, and at that distance it seems like it groups at about 2 to 3 MOA, which is standard for most AKs. Beyond that, I can't really say much else about the barrel. It does seem to be a really good barrel. One very strange aspect about this barrel that Palmetto State Armory is not doing on the FNA barrels nor these barrels is they are not crowning them. For some reason, they just decided to not crown these or their FN made barrels. I have no idea why. That can cause potential accuracy issues, but so far I have not noticed a single issue with this. In fact, most people who buy these and the 103s will probably never even take the muzzle device off and even be able to tell. So I wouldn't necessarily consider that a deal breaker nor an issue to worry about. Sadly, along with the non-chrome lined barrel, you're also not getting a chrome lined gas block nor a piston. However, I don't feel as though this is a deal breaker as those parts are mainly chrome lined due to the fact that the ammunition used on AKs is mostly corrosive. However, if you are not planning on shooting corrosive ammo, this is already not a non-issue for you and should be just fine. With that being said though, if you are planning on using corrosive ammo, as long as you're cleaning the gun properly after every single range trip, you should just be fine. Moving on to the handguard. The handguards are of a high quality. They are not identical though, in terms of the arsenal handguards. Many people have claimed that they are the exact to the arsenal handguards. From my findings, this is false. They are slightly less high quality, but despite this seem to be of a very good quality. The bottom handguard does have a heat shielding in it and does serve well. However, I have found that it is not as good as a Galil heat shield. But despite this, it should work for about maybe three, four mags, and then until it gets too hot that you might have to wear a glove. 
With that being said, though, I did have the plum furniture. The plum is a very good looking color and should work very well if you're planning on using any plum magazines. Also discussing the buttstock real quick. The buttstock is of a high quality and this is a folder so it does feature the cutout for the accessory rail on the other side. Moving on to the rear sight, you can clearly see that it is marked up to a thousand meters and does feature the Russian P battle setting. I found this sight works extremely well and works on par with any other AK. Alongside this gun being a side folder, all side folders feature the thicker flat dust cover. While the non-folders feature the thinner ribbed dust cover, this dust cover has proven itself to be a very high quality dust cover. However, I did notice there is a slight nick on the dust cover where it seems like they didn't finish machining it all the way. Is that a problem? Personally, I don't think so. For $1,000, I could care less if that is looking like that or not. It also features a extended safety lever. For a right-hand shooter, this should serve you very well as you can quickly swipe up with your right index finger to drop the safety. Personally, for me as a left-hander, it still is somewhat tricky to use, but I have found no issue with it whatsoever. Moving on to the trigger. The trigger is a Palmetto State Armory standard trigger. It is a very good trigger. I would assume it's in the four to five pound range. Despite this, it is definitely easy to tell when it is going to break and is, in my opinion, better than the Tapco G2 trigger, which is somewhat of a blasphemous thing to say as that is considered a very good trigger. Personally, for me, I prefer the predictability of this trigger over a Tapco G2, and the hardness level seems to be very good, as so far I have not seen any wear on the tail. Moving to the left-hand side of the gun, you can clearly see the stock, the cutout for the stock, and the button to fold the stock. As you can clearly see, there is some slight cosmetic damage to the button. From what I've seen, all Palmetto State Emery's usually come with some slight nicks, or blems. The accessory rail does have some slight wear on it, finish wear mostly, from just a few times of using a Midwest Industries mount. So focus, there we go. You can clearly see there's a little bit of finish wear on the rivet. But despite that, there seems to be no other finish wear on this gun whatsoever, and it looks rather nice. The stock does fold up very tightly and works very well. One of the things that really surprised me about this gun was how good the magazine fitment was. Many AKs have issues where magazines fit either too loosely or too tight. This is often due to how imported rifles are cut by importers. With that being said, this is a 100% American-made AK, and therefore Palmetto State Armory is in control of how the magazine well is cut. None of the magazines that I have used have had any real issues that where they are too tight, that they remove material, or too loose. However, the only magazine I have not tried to use in this gun is this East German magazine. Simply because it is a bit too tight, especially at this edge right here, and I do not want to force it in as this magazine is in an extremely good condition. So you might find some fitment issues with some Bakelites, but beyond that, all these other polymer style magazines seem to fit extremely well. I primarily use these Bulgarian made commercial magazines with steel reinforcements on the lips and locking lugs. These have worked really well for me, except I believe I've had one malfunction due to one of these magazines. I have also been using these plum Tula made magazines because they look aesthetically pleasing in the gun and work very well. I also have a circle 10 magazine and can say that there's no issues with that and the provided PMAG has worked very well. The only issue I've had with this gun in terms of a malfunction was a very strange one that I can't really describe to you. It was a stove pipe with a live round. That is, the stove piping round was a live round sticking out of the side of the ejection port caught between the bolt and the trunnion. There is no other or another round going into the chamber, so I'm not entirely sure what caused it. I assume 
what happened was is that when the round was being stripped from the magazine, it simply decided to go to off to the right instead of going to the chamber. Moving on to the internals, one thing I forgot to actually mention, however, uh, was the type of ammunition I've mostly been using. I have mostly been using Bernal ammunition. However, I have been using a mixture of Wolf branded Bernal and actual branded Bernal. The Wolf branded Bernal is, as you previously saw, a lacquer co uh, coated and lacquer sealed, uh, almost identical copy to seven and six in terms of how it looks. However, both are 60 grain bullets. The Bernal uh, manufactured and branded ammunition has a uh, different look to it. It's a uh, steel case with a uh, gray finish. Almost looks like a uh, wolf or tool made ammunition. However, both have seemed to function flawlessly and have had no issues with the reliability or accuracy of either. However, I am planning on, uh, well, currently I have bought some Ukrainian made 69 grain ammunition that I'll be further testing and uh, comparing to the other ammunition as it is a uh, much heavier bullet. So we'll see how that performs later down the road. Uh, without further ado, though, I'll show you the parts, starting off with the bolt carrier. Um, as you can see, this gun is extremely filthy. Um, no real wear on the bolt carrier uh, piston. I don't feel as though this is a real issue. Um, the piston is not chrome-lined. However, it is stainless steel, and it looks to be of a really good high quality. I wouldn't worry about that one bit. Some wear I do see, though, is there is some rubbing wear on the top end right here. That is extremely common on many AKs, including arsenals. They do seem to rub right there, so I'd recommend putting oil on it if you could. There does seem to be some uh, tooling marks on the inside. However, I don't see anything progressing or getting uh, worse in terms of uh, burrs or anything like that. There's seems to be all good. Personally, I have noticed that there is quite a bit of tooling marks on Palmetto State Armory made uh, forged parts, but I don't, I don't really think it's a big deal, nor should you worry about it. Um, as you can see, the bottom part right here has some finish wear, but I wouldn't consider that anything to be alarmed about. The tail maybe have a little bit of peening or mushrooming, I can't really tell. There might be a little bit tiny, yeah, there might be a little bit of it, but so far, so good. Again, this is a aspect that many people, I feel like, go a little bit overboard on. Um, eventually, this will stop uh, mushrooming out, and as long as it stops, it really doesn't matter. Uh, with that being said, though, this bolt carrier looks very good. Moving on to the bolt itself. This is the thin stemmed exposed extractor AK-74 style bolt. As you can see, there is some slight tooling marks um, and some finish wear, but overall this looks to be a really high quality. Um, as you can see, there's some finish wear right there and right there. Uh, many people are worried about the extractor on this and so far, I see no issues with the extractor whatsoever. The extractor issue uh, stems from this initial batch of AK-74s that first came out where the barrel face and the extractor were hitting each other so hard that eventually it would break the extractor. From what I have been told and see, that issue was fixed. And as this is a side folder, this is a much later batch than the initial first batch as those were only fixed stock versions. As you can see, this does have a free floating firing pin. One thing I did see is this one man had some finish wear right here, similar to mine, but his was actual uh, indentations in the metal, almost looked like staking. So far I haven't noticed that, but I do see a similar finish wear pattern. Not sure what's causing that. He was using an ALG trigger. I'm using the Palmetto State Armory trigger. But I will continue to watch out for that and see if anything 
happens down the line. I'm not sure if you can really see that, but seems to be okay. And again, it is free floating. But yeah, that is the bolt, the lugs. All look to be good, just minor finish wear, really. Um, nothing I would say is alarming. The spring looks to be good. Um, no real complaints there. And uh, just to go ahead and re-show you, here is the dust cover. Um, again, there is that slight manufacturing defect. Um, again, doesn't really seem to be an issue. In fact, it might even be causing uh, it might even be causing that little bit of rubbing right there. I'm not sure. It may not be, but uh, overall, these parts seem to be very good. No complaints whatsoever. You can see that there is no peening or markings on the barrel face. Again, that is a huge issue of debate. Uh, I saw many people falsely claiming that. If you buy one of these, expect the extractor to break within a few hundred rounds because the gun is built faultily. That does not seem to be the case. Again, it seems to be a first batch issue that has been resolved. Looking at our locking lugs, they seem to be in focus. Very nice. No issues whatsoever. I don't see any burrs or anything like that. Our rails are really good looking. Uh, the gun is very smooth, almost on par, if not exactly par, to a arsenal. Not milled, of course, uh, stamped. Here's our trigger. No real finish wear on the trigger, and everything seems to look very good. You can see the side folding uh, hardware, and everything else looks very good. Here's our extractor. I don't see any wear on that. Overall, everything is looking very nicely. With that being said, there's not really much else I can say about this gun so far with 420 rounds. It appears to be a very high quality AK. In fact, one of the things that I was initially worried about, and I feel like many people who aren't used to Palmetto State Armories, you're, you're afraid that the gun is going to be of a lower quality than a foreign made AK that it's going to you're going to notice the difference right away that this is a cheaper you know lower quality made AK but what really surprised me about this gun was that it doesn't feel like a foreign made AK in the sense that it looks and seems just to be a little bit different but in all regards, it is a real AK. It feels, operates, and runs just like any AK. You don't have to baby this gun. You don't have to feel like it's gonna. You don't feel like it's gonna break under any real abuse. So what I can say is this: it feels like a brand new American-produced AK. That is the best way to describe it. It is a real AK, in my opinion. It feels like an AK. It runs like an AK. It just a very, very high quality American made product. By high quality, I'm of course referring to the fact that the finish looks really good. All the parts are brand new. Because one aspect of uh, foreign made guns is they're usually made on aging tooling that is uh, going to show up some minor uh, blemishes and other th aspects of uh, uh, aging uh, on brand new parts. For example, you'll see like, you know, very light pitting on some of the parts and some other stuff. But again, this gun is looking very good. Some final statements and thoughts before I uh, end this video. I'd also like to talk about the way in which you can find one and uh, how best to get one for yourself. Before that, though, I would like to mention the fact that I did use this Hollow Sun primarily on this rifle. Um, I did use a Midwest Industries mount for it. It seemed to hold, uh, hold zero very well and performs adequately. I am planning on getting a 1P63, which is currently going through customs and um, all the crap that uh, has to come with importing stuff. So once that comes in, I'll be uh, using that primarily on this rifle, and I'll eventually do a review of that as well. However, I just want to quickly say that it can be somewhat hard to find this rifle in stock. As many of you who are currently trying to get one, 
it's it tends to be a rush to see who can put their information in first when they first come into stock. It seems to be that if you already have your information preloaded, it is very easy to get one. You simply have to wait and check around 4 p.m. or so on weekdays and see when they have them in stock. If you have your information preloaded into Palmetto State Armory's website, it should be pretty easy to get through the checkout process. However, there is another way to get one of these. Um, originally, people were making jokes that these would pop up on Gun Broker selling for about $2,000. Well, it seems like they are, and I actually got mine through this way. However, many of you should be aware that you'll probably overpay by any amount to get this rifle. I overpaid, I would say, by about two to $300, maybe on the $200 or so range. That is because the gentleman who was selling this sold this rifle as the way it came with a PMAG, a Bulgarian commercial mag, and a thousand rounds of Barnal 60 grain. I bought this for 1,900 rounds. To me, it was worth it. Why? Because the Barnal ammunition is about $400 plus shipping and handling. You're looking at paying maybe $50 to $80 to ship this rifle. I'm not entirely sure. And then you have to wait on everything getting to you. Currently, it seems that most businesses selling guns take quite a while to send and ship anything from ammo to magazines to guns. The way I did it, I got my stuff very quickly. It was all free shipping, and I got my gun within a week. Personally, I think it was well worth the money I spent for this rifle, and I would strongly advise you to check out for such deals on Gun Broker and other ways, uh, such as like Arms List. However, I would prefer you get it through Palmetto State Armory to avoid getting scammed. Um, but going through Gun Broker seems to be a really good option. With that being said, I can't really think of anything else to say. So I will leave this off with saying that I do, again, plan on doing a thousand round count and higher video updates. So stay tuned for those. If you like what you saw, please hit like and subscribe. Comment if you have any questions or concerns, and I'll try to answer them quickly as possible. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.